It took much longer than we expected, but updates are starting to flow through for the OneNote desktop app on Windows. Microsoft has announced a slew of upcoming features that we're really excited about, and we've been hands-on with some of these features already, and there'll be much more coming soon. If you've been following OneNote over the last few years, you'd be all too aware of the headaches that Microsoft created by making two versions of OneNote. OneNote for Windows 10 and OneNote Desktop. From around 2016, the OneNote team had a plan to replace the OneNote Desktop version with OneNote for Windows 10. But after several years of heading down that path, they decided to walk back on that plan and reinvest in the OneNote Desktop version again, announcing that it'll soon be the one OneNote. Now this was a tough call to make, and the decision will be difficult for many people who invested in OneNote for Windows 10, like me. If you're in that boat, don't worry, you don't need to move or do anything just yet, but it looks to me like this year will be the year that gets you really excited about OneNote again. So the OneNote desktop version will now just be called OneNote, and it'll be the one OneNote going forward, at least after 2025. For the last couple of years, the OneNote developers have been madly rewriting the code and updating what was known as OneNote 2016 to the 2022 Office 365 standard. Now most of that work was done behind the scenes, and you'd be hard pressed to see any fruits of the labor in that app. That is until now. There are four key elements of OneNote desktop that are changing over the next couple of months. They include design changes to help you to focus on your content, new features that significantly enhance content capture with not only keyboard, but ink, voice, and camera. There are a few changes that help you to organize your notes and pages, and some great changes that improve the ability and the clarity of sharing notebooks with others. So let's take a look at these four key areas, starting with the visual refresh. Initially, you'll notice an update to the visual design of OneNote to make it fall into line with the other Office 365 products like Word, Excel, and Outlook. The OneNote title bar loses its purple color in line with the rest of Office, and rounded corners have been added to match the Windows 11 design. Those few things are necessary, but they won't make a huge difference to me. What will make a difference to me is the redesign of visual elements like your notebook list, sections, and pages. These are now much more readable and modern looking, and with this update, we'll have the ability to arrange sections and pages on the left-hand side, similar to the way we had them in OneNote for Windows 10. Now, I've been using OneNote since 2003, so I'm very used to the traditional layout of OneNote with notebooks on the left, sections across the top, and pages down the right-hand side. However, as a OneNote trainer, I found that this layout caused some challenges for new users. The classic mistake that new users make is they click on the section button at the top of the screen when they want to create a new page. And we found that when we started using OneNote for Windows 10 for training, that people simply didn't make this mistake. And that was just because the sections and the pages were arranged together on the left. This layout also had some advantages in terms of screen real estate. So we're glad to see that this is now an option for people moving across into the OneNote desktop version. You'll be able to change between navigation styles to suit your preference, and no doubt there'll be many more visual tweaks and changes that'll come along. One more great option in the visual refresh is a simplified ribbon. OneNote for Windows 10 was great for its simplicity. There's simply far less buttons and icons using much less space. So now in the new OneNote, you'll be able to use a simplified ribbon which reflects fairly closely on what we had in OneNote for Windows 10. But if you prefer, you can stick with the classic ribbon which includes all of the menus that we're used to in the desktop version. So those are the visual updates. Now to the thing that I'm most excited about, and that's the content capture updates. One of the reasons that I've been such a heavy OneNote for Windows 10 user over the last several years is that it has a much better interface for pen and touch. The draw menu in OneNote Desktop hasn't really been touched since 2010, and the interface wasn't updated to keep up to speed with the new pen hardware like the Surface Slim Pen 2 or the Surface Pro 8. It didn't make use of the haptic feedback and the low latency features, but now with this new update, we'll see a new draw menu in line with the rest of Office. In the current channel for Office, we already have the ink to shape feature. Now it was added recently, and it's great for drawing a quick flowchart. Ink to text has also been updated to match OneNote for Windows 10. It now automatically matches the font size and color in proportion to your original ink version. In this new update, they'll also add pencils and the ruler. And drawing with a pen or a pencil will trigger the haptic feedback from your Slim Pen 2 on your Pro 8 or your Laptop Studio, meaning that writing in OneNote will again feel something like real pen and paper. It's actually pretty amazing to use. And the thing that I'm most intrigued about is the new pen focus view. One of the really cool things in this version of OneNote, and this goes back many years, maybe all the way back to the beginning, is the full page view. Full page view allows you to hide all of the menus and navigation from the UI, allowing you to focus in on note taking. And if you rotate your Surface Pro around into the portrait mode, it automatically goes into full screen view, giving you an A4 size piece of paper to write on. 
But in this mode, it was a little clunky to change your pen color. In pen focus view, pens will be right there. Okay, so an ink first pen experience should be a given in 2022, it's well overdue. But the combination of ink and voice is where this gets interesting. For many years now, in OneNote, we've had the ability to record audio while you take notes. You can then play back the audio in sync with your notes, showing you what you wrote as things were said. And you can even initiate the playback of that audio from what you wrote on the page. And now we have transcripts linked to your notes. So after you've attended the meeting and taken your notes, you can look back at the transcript as well as listen to the audio and see exactly what it was that you wrote. Now this will be a really powerful record keeping tool. Now this feature uses the advanced speech recognition capabilities that we already see in Office Dictate, live captions in PowerPoint, closed captions and transcripts in Teams, as well as the voice to text feature in Windows. Now all of those things benefit from having the best dual Farfield studio microphone setup that we have on our Surface devices that are designed brilliantly for capturing voice. So this feature is exciting because it frees your people up to take deep notes. Shallow notes are the notes that you take with a laptop keyboard, basically where you type everything that is said. It's really a waste of time because you don't retain much when you're typing notes in meetings that way, you're just a human photocopier. Now, with focus mode in OneNote, you can focus on key points, action items, and things that are really important. And writing those down with your pen takes advantage of your powerful visual computer, your brain, improving your processing and memory, shifting the focus away from formatting and spelling, and giving you the space to think. The computer can take care of typing everything that was said far better than you could clacking away on your keyboard. And this will allow you and me to focus on being a creative, problem solving, deep thinking and smart human being instead of a clackety clack meeting drone. Wow, I am so looking forward to this feature. It's incredibly important. Another great tool that's been languishing in the desktop version of OneNote is the math tool. In OneNote for Windows 10, this has become an incredible teaching tool. Math's work is really not suited to a keyboard, it's much better done with a pen, but the math tool would recognize equations, show you how to solve them step by step, and even graph them. But on the OneNote desktop version, this tool hadn't been updated since Windows XP. So to say it was looking tired is a bit of an understatement. It's now been redesigned to match the features of the Windows 10 version, and it looks fantastic. So there's a lot of great things coming with the inking experience in OneNote. Voice is also a really important input method in multimodal computing, and I've been using Dictate in OneNote for Windows 10 to help me write a lot of these scripts. Now this was previously available in OneNote desktop as part of the learning tools add-in, but fortunately it's now natively right there on the home tab in the latest Office 365 OneNote version. Like we mentioned before, we've been making a lot of use of this feature already with PowerPoint captions, Dictate in Word and Outlook, and in Teams with transcripts and closed captions. It leverages Microsoft's cloud and AI technologies to recognize even the most difficult accents like Australian, Scottish, and Irish. Actually, we're not difficult, we're just unique. Voice recognition will never be perfect, but it is an incredibly useful tool to have in OneNote. A few quick tips on commands that you could use while you're dictating in any Office 365 app with Dictate. You could say delete that, and it will delete the last word or phrase. Say pause dictation to take a break and collect your thoughts. Say new line to add a new paragraph break and full stop, comma, question mark, or exclamation point to add your punctuation. Or if you prefer, hit settings and try out the auto punctuation feature. This uses AI to predict the punctuation that you need. A lot of modern cutting edge Windows computers have a camera on the back. If your laptop doesn't have a camera on the back, well, it's time to get a better one. Why? Well, it's not like this option will replace my phone camera or even better, my real camera, but having a camera on the back of my device allows me to capture documents like notes, planner boards, and whiteboards directly. So I don't have to take a photo with my personal phone and then email a copy of it to my email account, then open the email, save the attachments and import them into my document. Of course, there are far better ways to manage a workflow like that. For example, I use an app called Office Lens or Microsoft Lens to do that. But a lot of people are still doing that photo to email to document workflow. And having a camera on the back of my computer means that I can just go direct. The new OneNote has added the ability to capture a photo from the camera on your device directly onto the page like we had in OneNote for Windows 10. Like OneNote for Windows 10, the camera app in Windows adds the Office Lens document and whiteboard detection AI to the picture so that you can effectively scan your documents with the inbuilt camera. And that makes OneNote Desktop a whole lot more powerful than OneNote for Windows 10 ever was because OneNote Desktop has always done a far better job of text recognition or OCR than OneNote for Windows 10 did. In fact, if I take a photo with the camera on the back, 
the text in the document that I've captured is almost instantly recognized and searchable. I can even extract the text without waiting. It's great to be finally seeing a lot of progress here in OneNote with multimodal input. And we do expect these kinds of developments to continue now that there is a clear direction forward. A couple of last things. OneNote recently added the ability to reorganize your pages with the sort option on the page list. And the sharing experience has been updated. You can now see a share button in the top right corner. And for clarity, the sharing options have been described better. It's called share entire notebook because in OneNote, you can't just share a page or a section for live collaboration, you can only share an entire notebook. However, you can email a copy of a page with Outlook, so that option's there too. If you're in the Office Insiders program, you can already start trying out a lot of these features. And if you, like me, are stuck in the current channel of Office, well, we'll start to see these features trickle in over the next couple of months. What's great about all of this is that the gap between OneNote and OneNote for Windows 10 is closing. Now, I've been able to switch back to OneNote Desktop for most of my OneNote work. And when these features are completely shipped, there'll be few reasons to stay using OneNote for Windows 10. It will stick around with support until 2025, but if you stay with it until then, you'll be missing out on some of these great new updates. And lastly, there's a really interesting phenomenon with the adoption of OneNote. If you're a regular OneNote user, you probably can't imagine working without it, or at least without a tool like it. But in the workplace, only about 10 to 20% of Office 365 users actually use it. Why is that? Well, it's because we stopped training people on how to use a computer back in the year 2000. OneNote came out in 2003, and because of the lack of training at work, people are working inefficiently. They're taking notes in Word, or even worse, Notepad. They're capturing information into Outlook. They can't find anything, and they're struggling to get things done. OneNote is the place for information that's not a document, not an email or a presentation. So we as business leaders need to ensure that our people know about OneNote, they need to know why to use it, what to use it for, and what not to use it for. And they need to know how. Throwing a self-help video up on the internet won't move the needle. You need to teach people to get results. We've seen companies move from 10% to 70 to 80% usage with training. So contact us to find out how you can use OneNote at your company using the links below. And if you want to find out more about OneNote or if you're just getting started, hit subscribe and check out our OneNote playlists. Links in the description. And we'll see you next week.